Hi, my name is Kenneth Paul, and this is my woodworking shop. It's a genuine pleasure to have you here. I make these videos to share with you the projects and the woodworking techniques from here in my shop. Today's project, a wooden assembly mallet. Seems simple enough to start with. Purple hard head, ash handle. These are often referred to as a mystery mallet. They're assembled with two dovetails and a center through tenon. Now for the head to never come off, the dovetail is tapered. But because the dovetail is tapered towards the handle, it's impossible for the handle to go on. Obviously there's a trick to it, and I'm going to show you, I'm going to walk you through it. Uh, to be honest, building this was a little bit of a humbling experience for me. I'm in the middle of remodeling my kitchen and I'm doing other work. So I'm doing this between things, and mistakes were made. <laughs> I would, days would go by and I wouldn't work on it, then I would have a few moments and work on it. Let's just say I didn't give it the concentration it was due, and three mistakes were made, and I was able to work through those mistakes. I'm going to show you what those mistakes were, show you how to avoid them, or how to incorporate them if you choose. All right, let me give you a close-up on the uh, mallet. Uh, stay towards the end. At the end of the video, I'm going to go over the design issues, what angles to use, what, ha what changes when you change those angles, just so you're better prepared to make this project yourself. Now, you can see the two dovetails, the center tenon, Okay, well, let me show you how to make one of these yourself. All right, this is the start of making the uh, mallet. What we have here is the head, which is a piece of purple heart, two and a half inches thick, four inches tall, six inches wide. And over here is the ash handle, uh, two and a half inches by about one and seven eighths. Now you can see here I've already started uh, marking out and cutting the uh, rising dovetails. Uh, a word on marking these kind of dovetails or this kind of a project in general. You cannot trial fit these rising dovetails. Once you put it together, it cannot come apart. You have one shot to put it together. So you have to rely on exact markings and exact cutting. Uh, you have to be able to use, a pencil is not going to do it, you're going to need a marking knife and a marking gauge. These are not expensive, you can get these on eBay, uh, eBay, Amazon, whatever, they are not expensive items, you absolutely need them. You can see here where I've marked out my dovetail, I've marked out my center mortise, and I've marked out my other dovetail and started cutting it out using a Japanese saw. Now, this is something I hate to show you, but <laughs> it is what it is. We look on this side, what do we see? This piece. This is the piece that was there before I cut in another piece. If you look here, when I was cutting it, I let my attention wander and I started thinking about something else. And if you look carefully, you can see I cut outside the line. Bad Kenny. <laughs> so I cut out about a 5 8 by 5 8 uh, block and I mortar it and I just glued in another piece. When I'm done, no one's ever going to see it, but it's just aggravating a moment slip of attention 
and there we are having to do repairs. But everyone makes mistakes. That's mine. But don't tell anyone. All right. Let's see. All right, now what I'm going to show you is how to start the saw. I should have shown you on this side, but I'll show you on this. Once you have your lines scribed, and like I say, you're going to cut with your Japanese saw at this angle. To start the saw, you need to make a little bit of a shelf. So you take your chisel, just knock in this, just, just not even a sixteenth of an inch. Then take your chisel, I'm going to show you in a second, run it alongside and create a little bit of a groove. That will be the starting point for your saw. Let me set up and I'll show you. All right, now this is the line that we want to cut along. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chisel and I'm just going to come real close to the line. And that's all we need. This little edge, let me grab the saw. This little edge we just created gives us a place to start the saw. Now I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll cut myself a couple of curve cuts, chisel this out, and then I'll start using my straight edges and getting this at a perfect ramp. All right, uh, let me get going on this and I'll pick up again when it comes time to start uh, lathing the uh, handle. All right, see you then. All right. This is where we stand on the hammer right now. You can see what I have here is I roughed out the head. Now you can see here on top the dovetails are half inch deep. Yeah, when we look on the bottom, they're three quarters of an inch deep. That's what's going to let us assemble this as a rising dovetail. We'll get to that in a moment. And right now I'm pre-turning the uh, handle before I start cutting the uh, tenon and dovetails. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn the handle as an oblong instead of a round. It'll be round here but as we get down here, what I'm going to do is offset the uh, tailstock three eighths of an inch on one side, return it, then go three eighths to the other side of center, turn it again, and that's going to give us an oblong handle. Uh, let me take the piece out of the lathe so you can see that marking. All right. Now you can see here, at the end of the tailstock, I have my center. That's where I've turned it at this point. Now I'm going to return just the end of it on this center, and then I'll return it on this center, both of them three-eighths of an inch off center, and that will turn the end of this handle and from a round to an oblong. I like the grip of an oblong better. All right, let me get to it and I'll show you what the end result looks like. 
All right, what I'm doing here is using a tenon saw to uh, cut out my center tenon and the two side dovetails. If you look back here, you see I have a mirror set up so I can see the line on the other side. See what I'm doing. I'm leaving this center half inch tenon, then cutting the rising dovetail half inch on top, three quarter on the bottom, and you can see the dovetail is marked out. So that will go from this line to this edge. Afterwards, and cut here, here. Uh, to make it fit this rising dovetail. You can see how it ramps up. I'd like to take a moment, see, you know, I'm using that particular tenon saw. I'd like to take a moment and discuss the legacy of tools. The tools in the shop, some I purchased, many were my grandfather's, most were my father's. Also, considering that a lot of these tools in the shop date back to the early 1900s, countless craftsmen have had, those, they had their hands on these tools. This tenon saw belonged to a, I'm a member of the Rhode Island Woodworkers Guild, and one of their members, Jerry Bernardini, passed away and his family generously donated his tools to the Woodworking Guild. Uh, some went to the guild, others were auctioned off to support the guild, and I ended up with uh, his tenon saw and a few other items. And I'm just saying, when I use my grandfather's tools, my father's tools, another craftsman's tools, and now Jerry's tools, I'm continuing their legacy of craftsmanship. It's incumbent upon me to do the best I can do to honor the time that they spent with these tools. Just like when I'm gone and someone else is using these tools, I hope that they take a moment to reflect that other hands have had their hands on these tools. And they're only, most of these tools will last several lifetimes. So really you're just a caretaker and these tools will pass on. Anyway, I just thought I'd, uh, that just, the thought just occurred to me on that, that all the tools I use are, carry the legacy of all the craftsmen have used them before me. All right, well, I'm going to continue cutting out this center wedge. I'll then use a coping saw to cut off the bottom of it. And then I will use chisels to bring it exactly to the line. Even though you can see the pencil line here, this is actually marked with a uh, marking knife. And so I need to bring it to that exact line again. You can't trial fit this. Layout is everything on this project. So you have to be very precise in what you're doing. So I'll continue uh, cutting this out. And uh, once I get them uh, roughed out, we'll uh, pick up again. Uh, in the meantime, I will just carry on. All right. Thank you much. All right. Where we are now, I've got my center tenon cut. And I've got one tapered dovetail done. Tapers from wide on top to narrow on the bottom. And also, the other way, half inch on top, three quarter on the bottom. As it's mating slot is half inch on top, three quarter on the bottom. I like to cut my dovetails first and then actually use them as the layout. 
you can see here bottom works now because there's a three I want the uh, dovetails to stick out three eighths of an inch I back up three eighths of an inch and use that to lay out the top of my dovetail and it just stays the full width now there's two ways you can cut out well more than two ways but there's two two primary ways you can cut out this facet you can take a saw just cut straight down what I prefer to do is to cut a series of kerfs and then chisel it. Let me set up and I'll show you the uh, method that I prefer. Alright, you can see I've got the first couple of kerfs in. So now all I'm doing I'm just cutting to almost to the line and almost to the bottom. I'll continue doing these curves all the way down and I'll just take my chisel break it away and then refine it to where I'm just on this line and just on this line just as I did on the other side I find that I've got on these odd angles I just more comfortable cutting the curves and then working with my chisel than I am trying to saw down and worry about uh, the grain direction grabbing my blade all right, uh, let me uh, continue in on this and I'll start the video again when we move on to the next step. Okay, thank you much. All right, we're finally ready for assembly. You can see the head is all cut out, the handle, and this is actually what makes this project even possible where I've undercut the two side dovetails to make this flexible enough to be able to slide in to the head. But first we need to cover a mistake I've made. All right, God, I hate mentioning I've made a mistake, but this, this may or may not work, but I think I may have corrected it. We will see. These are the original plans from the magazine. I changed the dimensions because I wanted a larger hammer. The hammer on this one is five and a quarter wide, I made mine six. This one is one and seven eighths thick, I made mine two and a half. This one is uh, three and a quarter tall, I made mine four inches tall. Now, on the original plans, the uh, top of the dovetail is seven sixteenths and the bottom is eleven sixteenths. I made mine one half and three quarter. I kept the dimensions the same, so I added a sixteenth of both though, it should be fine. However, as I mentioned in my video on uh, making the uh, T-dipper, whenever you alter a set of plans, go over it to make sure because the dimensions they had were there for a reason. And because I was doing this project in between some other projects, I did not trial fit everything. I did not do my due diligence. And now I'm paying the price. My mistake bottom of their tenon is 3 8 the top is 1 inch. I wanted something a little wider. I made the bottom of mine 1 half, the top inch and a quarter, and that's where the problem arises. Here's the dimensions I used. 6 by 2 and a half, 
with equal spacing of my dovetails on top, half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch. And this is the bottom. Now the bottom is three quarters of an inch, quarter, half, quarter, three quarter. Now if I'd have kept it three eighths and one inch, this three quarter inch depth would have been enough. However, because I went to inch and a quarter, let's take this top. Now this has to come in from the bottom. And this is how it slides together once you clamp it. See the problem? It overhangs. I should have backed this up all the way to one inch and made the bottom five eighths and then this would have worked. What I had to do, and we'll see if it works or not, is I cut a notch into my dovetails. Now that notch will get covered by the uh, square part of the handle so you won't see it. But I had the notch in about a third of the way to be able to start the handle in. All because I didn't bother doing a mock-up. Two seconds of work and this may or may not go together because I did not do a mock-up. So we will see. The top is fine. The bottom, instead of having the quarter inch here, I should have backed this up all the way to the edge of the center tenon. And then, just to be safe, I should have made this 5 eighths instead of half inch. Now I think I'm going to be able to get this together. Uh, we will see. I'm going to set up in a moment and you'll see when I try to drive it together if it breaks apart or not. Uh, to try and lube it, obviously I can't use grease. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some thickened epoxy and hopefully that will lube the uh, little track I've made here enough for the dovetails to slide by because once they get in about a third of the way the head opens up enough goes from narrow to wide to where it fits. It's just that first third of the way that I've had to make these notched channels. I hate making stupid mistakes, but no one will ever know. Well, no one but me and you, but you're not going to tell anyone. I won't tell anyone if this goes together. No one will see it. All right, let me set up and then we'll try and get this stuff together. All right, we're going to try and assemble. Let's see what happens. Got the epoxy on there to see if it will work as a grease. We'll find out if that's a good idea or not. Right. I made a little plywood cap to put on there so I can bang on it hard and not worry about trying to split the handle. All right. Let's try driving her down. down there. Get some gloves on here. Some paper towels. Okay. Let me clean some of that epoxy up, take it out of the vise. Let's see what we've got. Well, it drove down. That's a plus. Rather it broke anything, or if it even came out right because of the notches I had to cut. We will find out in just a moment. Okay. First things first. 
Let me release the two legs. I clamped legs to the sides of this so that I wouldn't drive the head out of the vise. Well, okay, that came out good. Let's take a look over here. I'll clean the epoxy off. Let's refocus. All right. All right. I'm pretty happy with that, considering all the mistakes I made. Alright, let me clean the epoxy off on this, and then we'll get back to it. Alright, what I'm doing here is reversing the third mistake I made on this hammer. God, I gotta laugh at myself. Uh, during this project, I've been doing other things. So days go between me spending an hour or two working on it. And when I turned the handle, it wasn't marked yet. Darned if I didn't put the oblong opposite of the way I wanted it to. So luckily I turned it beefy enough that there's plenty of stock for me to remove to reshape the handle. And that's the last thing I have to do before I put the finish on and I'll show you the finished project. But for now, I'm just going to reshape the handle just a little bit. That is a a little bit of oblong on it from the way we turned it, which we went over. So I'm just going to take some of the oblong off with a smoke shave. And that will be it. My God, this has been a collection of mistakes. <laughs> oh. That's okay. Making mistakes isn't a problem as long as you can fix them. <laughs> That's half the skill. All right, let me get this wrapped up. I'll sand it, put a finish on it, and then uh, we'll go over the whole project. There we go. All right, let's discuss the design layout. Now, for aesthetic reasons, I wanted to end up with a tenon that was half inch on the bottom, and inch and a quarter on top. I wanted to go half inch thick by three quarters of an inch thick. Now by choosing to work this way to a set of dimensions not taking into effect any of the angles what you end up is with what I've already shown you if you take the top of the tenon as I've already shown and you lay it out at the bottom of the tenon, the two little corners stick over and you've got a notch for them. Now I knew that was going to happen to, to a certain degree and I knew I would have two different angles. So the angle on the bottom is different than the angle on top. The top edge and the bottom edge inside are both straight lines but it starts at one angle finishes at a different angle so it's a rolling bevel. Now I knew I was going to have to deal with that so I really didn't care. Now and I wanted to avoid that and I spent a little more time on layout which I should have. Alright, what we have here I have three lines drawn on this board. One at half inch, one at three quarter, one at one. Now, this is one and seven eighths wide, the same width as my tenons. And at half inch, I wanted inch and a quarter. So that's this outside angle you're looking at. But at three quarters of an inch, it's seven eighths wide. I only wanted a half inch showing on my tenon instead of seven eighths. So I used this other inside angle. for my bottom tenon, for the bottom of my dovetail. 
what I should have done was instead of going back three quarters of an inch, I should have gone back 15 sixteenths and that would have given me inch and a quarter on top and five eighths on the bottom and I could have lived with five eighths and that would have given me the same angle top and bottom that would have made my life simpler. On Roy Underhill's design and yeah, let me show you the magazine. This is based off a magazine article by Roy Underhill Popular Woodworking April 2012 issue number 196. His head is much smaller. The top of his tenon is one inch. The bottom is three eighths. But his head's only three and a quarter inches tall. Mine's four. The length of his head is five and a half minus six. And let me see, the thickness, mine's a full two and a half inches thick. His is only one and seven eighths. I specifically wanted to go two and a half. Again, for aesthetic reasons, I wanted to have half inch, half inch dovetail, half inch space. Half inch tenon, half inch space, half inch dovetail. Aesthetically, that's the line I wanted. And again, I wanted that half inch bottom, inch and a quarter top. So I made my life difficult. <laughs> what I should have done was the bottom of my tenon, as you know, was three quarters of an inch thick. Had I gone 15 16 just one sixteenth away from the center tenon, I could have had five eighths an inch and a quarter, which would have been very much the same design element. So you decide how you want to handle it. By having the uh, two different angles and having to cut that little notch, it really wasn't as bad a thing as I thought because what happened is the edges of my dovetail rode on that secondary ledge I cut and stopped it from damaging the edge of my dovetail on the way up. So it wasn't a terrible thing in all ways. And by the way, I do think using that thickened epoxy as a lubricant, as a grease, pairing it together, I really think that helped. Now, the other mistake I made. <laughs> Originally this handle was oblong. I put the ob I turned the handle with an oblong profile before the head was on, obviously. And I did it facing this way, as if the hammer, I went the long way as being the head of the hammer. And actually it's the thinner. So I had the oblong going the wrong way. So I just dressed it up with a spoke shave and that was fine. My other mistake, again, it's not visible from the top or bottom, but from the edge. You can see that little three-quarter by three-quarter slice I put in to correct the fact that I had miscut one of the angles when I wasn't paying attention. So keep your head in the game. Uh, a few other uh, hints to help you. Because I used epoxy, I made up a couple of pieces of plexiglass to slide inside my vise so that the faces of my vise didn't get all smeared with epoxy. And because you have to drive this down hard, I made legs to go underneath the head so that the head would stay above the screws so there'd be room to drive the tenon and dovetails through and also that my aggressive hammering wouldn't drive the head further down into the vise. Now, one moment. In green. Now this is the grain of the ash. This is a piece of the ash I made the handle out of. You can see it's flat sawn this way. 
cortisol in this way. When you cut the dovetails, you want to cut the dovetail on the flat saw. So you want the dovetail here, you want the tenon here, and the dovetail here. It's easier to bend on the flat saw on side than it would be on the quarter saw on side. Trying to bend it on the quarter saw on side is like trying to bend uh, cardboard stacked on edge versus lying on the flat. And anything you can do to make your life easier is you're better off doing. Now, the two undercuts you make in your tenons, to be able to squeeze it, you saw that we cut two undercuts. I used a, a see-through French curve, plastic free French curve, I found the curve I wanted, put it on top of the tenon, put a piece of tape to mark its location, and then traced it. Then I flipped it over, put the tape in the same place, traced the other side. You want the two sides to be symmetrical. When you put the clamp on that and bend, you want both sides to bend equally. All right, that covers the angles, it covers the grain, uh, turning oblong. Again, on turning oblong, what I should have done was on the wide part of the handle, what I did was I put my center, and then I went on each side of it, 3 8 3 8 uh, But I did it on the flat. What I should have done was center 3 8 3 8 But all in all, mistakes and all, I am pleased with how it turned out. It's not perfect, but it's a good fit. Keep your chisels sharp. <laughs> If you have to stop and sharpen your chisels while doing this, especially if you're using Purple Heart. Purple Heart is an abrasive wood on chisels. This project, because you cannot trial fit it, it's so important to get your layout lines exact. Use a marking gauge. Use a marking knife. Get those lines as absolutely perfect as you can and then chisel and cut to them as absolutely close as you can. Take your time there. That I cannot stress it enough. Because you cannot trial fit this, there's only one shot. If you want it to look half decent, you need to really carefully follow those lines. One small hint. If you're going to extend your Dovetails and tenon past the top of the head. When you do your marking, you're going to mark it from four inches up from the bottom. Now your dovetail is going to keep going wider. So from this point, on this one it was less than a sixteenth that I had to cut off. But you want to, from this point, square off and just chisel that corner back a little bit so that it stays square. If you let it stay wider, the dovetail is going to give you trouble passing through that last inch. So no matter how much, how longer you make this, the back of it's always going to be the full width. That's not a problem. The front dovetail is going to continue getting wider. So just square it off from this point up. And again, the longer you make these, the more important that is. For finish, I use my finish of choice, which is general finishes, satin, wipe on, gel varnish, two coats. I'll throw a coat of wax on it later. Sand it to 220. You see, I don't know if it comes off in the camera, you can see some tiny little checking on the end of the uh, hammer. Purple Heart doesn't always, when you buy a bowl blank of Purple Heart, it's not always as perfectly dry as you would like it to be. But those checks are minor, and the sooner you get a finish on it, the it'll slow down the uh, moisture uh, loss because this is winter time. 
so it is a little dry. All right. Well, there you have it. I hope you make this project yourself. It's a fun project. It mystifies people how it goes together. Again, I knew what a rising dovetail was, but I didn't think you could put two of them back to back. The thought never occurred to me about undercutting and then clamping. The perfect woodworker, there's a hint that when you look at this, if you look at it, you can see the slight angle on the dovetails. You'll see the center tenon is 90 degrees, but the tenons have a slight angle, which shows that they're coming up at an angle. Congratulations to anyone who's capable of seeing that, recognizing it, and then figuring out how it's made. Most people are not going to be able to figure this out until you tell them, which makes it the perfect project. It's a useful tool for your shop, and it's something to mystify people with. It's a fun novelty. And again, I hope you make one yourself, and I hope the information I've given you will help make your project successful. All right. Have a good day. Bye-bye. And as always, if you like the content I'm producing here, do me a favor, like, subscribe. It helps. Thank you much. Bye-bye.